All right, today we're going to continue talking about multiple angle identities, and we're actually going to be solving equations. All right, so we have all of our identities again and our unit circle. So this one says solve algebraically in the interval 0 to 2 pi. Notice that 0 is included, but 2 pi is not. So they want to know when does sine 2x equal cosine x. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get everything on one side. So I'm going to subtract cosine x. That's going to give me sine 2x minus cosine x equals 0. Well, then I can rewrite sine 2x, use a double angle identity, and this would be 2 sine x cosine x minus cosine x equals 0. Then I can factor out a cosine x. So if I GCF by cosine x, which means I'm dividing both of these terms by cosine x, I get 2 sine x minus 1 equals 0. Once you factored, you set your factors equal to 0 and solve. So I have cosine x equals 0 or 2 sine x minus 1 equals 0. To solve this one, I'm looking for all the angles that have an x coordinate of 0, which would be pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So for this one, x equals pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2. And to solve this one, I'm going to add 1. I get 2 sine x equals 1 divided by 2. I get sine x equals 1 half. So now I'm looking for all of the angles that have a y coordinate of 1 half, which would be this one, this one, not that one, it's negative, not that one, it's negative. So that gives me x equals pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. So my solution to this whole problem is x equals pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, pi over 6, and 5 pi over 6. Those are all my possible solutions. Now, you got to be careful, guys. You need to check your solutions. If you plug them back in and you get something that's undefined, all right, then you can't use it. You have to throw it out. Um, but if I go back and I plug these in, cosine of any of those are real numbers, sine of any of those are real numbers, so I don't have to worry about excluding any of them. All right, then they're going to want us to check this graphically. Oh, that's animated. Okay, so if I check graphically, all right, I typed in sine 2x. For y1, I typed in sine 2x minus cosine x. And I got, I set my window to go from, I don't know why it went from there. Oh, I know why, because I had to get the other zero. But um, I think I went from, I started out going zero to two pi, counting by pi over twos. And then my y window, I went negative two to two, but it kind of adjusted my window when I backed up a little bit to see this zero. Anyway, there is your pi over six. That is your pi over 2. That is your 3 pi over 2. And I don't remember what the other one was. Um, 5 pi over 6. Alright, there's your four solutions that we got. Alright. Oh, yeah. You're going to have to make sure you check, right? Because these don't obviously show up in terms of pi. But if you type that in, divide it out, you'll get those decimals. All right. So this one says find all solutions to the equation in the interval 0 to 2 pi. All right. So again, I'm going to rewrite sine 2x. I'm going to use my double angle identity and write it as 2 sine x cosine x minus tan x, but I'm going to rewrite tan x as sine x over cosine x equals zero. All right, so now I need a common denominator 
which will be cosine x. So I'm going to multiply by cosine x, cosine x. And if I distribute that, I'm going to have 2 sine x cosine squared x over cosine x minus sine x over cosine x. So then I can combine the top. So I have 2 sine x cosine squared x minus sine x all over cosine x. So I notice that both terms on top have a sign in them. So I'm going to factor out that sine x, which will leave me 2 cosine squared x minus 1 over cosine x equals 0. So if I rewrite that as, rewrite this side as sine x over cosine x times 2 cosine squared x minus 1. That would still be equal to that. So now I can rewrite sine x over cosine x as tan x. So I have tan x times 2 cosine squared x minus 1 equals 0. So now I can set my factors equal to 0. So I have either tan x equals 0 or 2 cosine squared x minus 1 equals 0. To solve tan x equals 0, you're looking for a y divided by an x that comes out to 0. So this one, if you took y divided by x, 0 divided by 1 is 0, so that would be one possibility. If you look at this one, this would be 1 divided by 0, which is undefined. This would be 0 divided by negative 1, which is 0, so pi works. And then obviously 2 pi would work again, but we can't include 2 pi, so that one's out. Um, because 2 pi is, there's a round bracket, we can't actually include it. So now if I solve this one, I'm going to add 1, and I get 2 cosine squared x equals 1 divided by 2. I get cosine squared x equals 1 half. Take the square root of both sides. You get cosine x equals plus or minus 1 over the square root of 2, which if you rationalize, gives me cosine x equals the square root of 2 over 2, plus or minus. Okay? So, let's see. If I do positive, I'm looking for all angles that have an x-coordinate of either positive square root of 2 over 2 or negative square root of 2 over 2. So there's an x-coordinate that's positive, negative, negative, positive. So those, I would get x equals pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. Alright, so let's see. We have all of these solutions. We have 0, we have pi, we have pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. If I look at any of these, i got to make sure that none of them are bad when I plug them in. And really, tan and cotan is what you have to worry about because that's when you have the possibility of dividing by 0. But if I do tan of 0, I'm fine. Tan of pi, I'm fine. It's not undefined. Tan of any of those are going to be the y's divided by x's. I don't get any undefines there, so I'm good. I should be able to keep all of my answers. All right, so if we look, all right, I typed in sine 2x minus tan x, and I went from 0 to 2 pi on my window, and I don't remember. I think I got I must have counted by pi over 4s. Okay, so we have a 0 at 0. We have 1 at 2.365, which is my 3 pi over 4. We have 1 at, I should have went in order here. Oh, I did. We have this one, then we have this one, which is pi over 4. Then we have this one, which is 3 pi over 4. Then we have this one, which is pi, 4 pi over 4, but that's just pi. And then we have this one. Wait, am I missing one? Where did I go? Mm, yeah, sorry, I went this way. 
There's your 5 pi over 4. There is your 8 pi over 4, which is 2 pi. And there is your 7 pi over 4, which is right there. Okay? So those are all my solutions from 0 to 2 pi. Alright, so you try this one, hit pause, come back when you're ready, and hopefully you got three. Alright, so let's see, I'm going to get everything on one side, so I'm going to add sine x. So now I have sine 2x plus sine x equals zero. I'm going to factor out a sine x, switch colors here, so if I factor out, a, uh, no I, got, I can't factor out a sine x yet, you can't factor out sine x from sine 2x, so I've got to get rid of that double angle, so I'm going to rewrite that as 2 sine x cosine x plus sine x equals 0, now I can factor out a sine, if I factor out a sine x, that's going to leave me to cosine x plus 1 equals 0. So I have sine x equals 0, and I have 2 cosine x plus 1 equals 0. To solve the first one, I'm looking for all y coordinates of 0, which would be 0 and pi. So x equals 0 and pi. And then to solve this one, I'd minus 1, minus 1, I get 2 cosine x equals negative 1, divide by 2, I get cosine x equals negative 1 half, which means I'm looking for all angles that have an x coordinate of negative 1 half, which would be this one, and this one, which is 2 pi over 3, and 4 pi over 3. So those are my four solutions. I don't have to worry about having to throw any of them out. Alright. And if we look at the graph, there are your intersection points. Okay. Alright, so now we're going to solve this one. We've got these squares. Okay, so I'm trying to get, um, <coughs> excuse me, I've got to get rid of I've got a half angle here, okay? So we have these half angle identities. So if I'm doing sine of u over 2, but this is squared, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the 2, and then since it, the sine is squared, all right, I've got to square the half angle. So that would be plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine of x all over 2. Alright, so now, if I, and I still have sine squared x over here. Alright, so now if I square this, I'm going to have sine squared x equals 2 times the square kills the square root. And I have plus or minus 1 minus cosine x all over 2. Alright, so now the 2's cancel out. And... Why did I just take the positive one? I'm not really sure why I kept the positive one. But anyway, this two, oh no, it's two times that. Sorry. So this two cancels that two. And I have sine squared x equals one minus cosine x. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace, change colors here, I'm going to replace sine squared x with 1 minus cosine squared x equals 1 minus cosine x. Alright, so now if I get everything on the same side, I'm going to minus 1, minus 1, and I'm going to add a cosine x and add a cosine x. That gives me cancels, and I get negative. What the heck am I doing? Oh, I went the other way. So I have negative cosine squared x plus cosine x equals zero. 
I don't like my square being negative, so I'm going to switch sides. So I'm going to add cosine squared x. Should have went the other way. And subtract cosine x, which gives me 0 equals cosine squared x minus cosine x. Now I can factor out a cosine. So I'd have cosine x minus 1. And then if I set those to 0, all right, so I either have cosine x equals 0, or I have cosine x minus 1 equals 0. All right, so now when I solve this, I'm looking for all the angles that have an x coordinate of 0, which would be pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. On this one, I'm going to add 1, add 1, I get cosine x equals 1. So I'm looking for all angles that have an x coordinate of 1, which would be 0 and pi. No, that has a negative 1, I can't do that. Alright, it would actually be 0 or 2 pi, but I can't include 2 pi because of the round brackets that they didn't put on this one. So x just equals 0. So my three answers are pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and 0. Alright, and if we check that graphically, you can see our pi over 2, our 3 pi over 2, and our 4 pi over 2, and of course 0. Okay. Oops. One. Okay, so on this one, we again, we have this half angle identity here that we're going to get rid of. So when we have cosine squared u, I can rewrite that as, or I'm sorry, we're not doing cosine squared, we're doing half angle. So I can rewrite that, I'm going to square the cosine, but cosine of x over 2 would be plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosine x all over 2 and that equals sine squared x. So over here, if I square the square root, I'm going to end up with sine squared x equals 1 plus cosine x all over 2. <coughs> Alright, so I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to rewrite sine squared as um, 1 minus cosine squared. And I'm going to multiply both sides by 2, and that gives me 1 plus cosine x on the other side. Alright, so I'm going to distribute my 2. That's going to give me 2 minus 2 cosine squared x equals 1 plus cosine x. I'm going to get everything on the same side. And I don't want my cosine squared to be negative like I did last time, so I'm going to move to the right. So I'm going to subtract 2, and I'm going to add 2 cosine squared x. That's going to give me 0 equals 2 cosine squared x plus cosine x minus 1. Okay, if I factor that, 2 times 1 is 2. Factors of 2 that make 1 are 1 and 2. Um, C is negative, so bully gets the middle, so I'm going to have to rewrite B. So I'm going to have 2 cosine squared x plus 2 cosine x minus 1 cosine x minus 1. Because I rewrote positive cosine x with 2 minus 1 cosines. 2 by 2, GCF, GCF, GCF again. Woo! So over here, I can factor out a cosine x. So I can actually factor out 2 cosine x, which would leave cosine x plus 1. If I factor out a negative 1, that would leave me cosine x plus 1. So then if I factor out a cosine x plus 1, I get 2 cosine x minus 1. So now I can set those factors to 0. And... I get cosine x plus 1 equals 0 and 2 cosine x minus 1 equals 0. 
So to solve the first one, I'm going to minus 1 minus 1, I get cosine x equals negative 1. I'm going to add 1 divided by 2, I get cosine x equals 1 half. So to solve the first one, I'm looking for all the angles that have an x coordinate of negative 1, which would be here. And that's it, so x equals pi. And then to solve this one, I'm looking for all the angles that have an x-coordinate of positive one-half, which would be that one and that one. Those are negatives on that side. So that would give me pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. And I don't have to worry about, I can't include 2 pi, but that's not one of my solutions, so I'm good. All right. So you try this one, hit pause, and come back when you're ready, and hopefully you got three. If you got one, you're not wrong, you do actually get that pi for a solution, but we have to throw it out, and I will show you why in a minute. Alright, so we're going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this sine of half angle. So I'm going to rewrite it as plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine x all over 2. Alright, so now I'm going to have to square both sides. Alright, so that's going to give me square, square, that's going to give me cosine squared x equals 1 minus cosine x over 2. Alright, so then I'm going to kill the fraction. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. And I get 2 cosine squared x equals 1 minus cosine x. I'm going to get everything on the same side, so I'm going to have 2 cosine squared x plus cosine x minus 1 equals 0. And I'm going to factor, again, I'm going to have to rewrite 1 in the middle, so I have 2 cosine squared x plus 2 cosine x minus 1 cosine x minus 1 equals 0. 2 by 2, factor out 2 cosine x would leave cosine x plus 1. Factor out a negative 1 leaves cosine x plus 1. Factor out a cosine x plus 1 leaves 2 cosine x minus 1 equals 0. Set those to 0. Cosine x uh, plus 1 equals 0 and 2 cosine x minus 1 equals 0. So to solve the first one, minus 1 minus 1, I get cosine x equals negative 1. Solve this one, add 1, divide by 2, I get cosine x equals 1 half. Alright, sorry, two of those at once. So now I need the angles that have an x coordinate of negative 1, which would be pi. And I need the ones that have an x coordinate of 1 half, positive 1 half, which would be pi over 3. And 5 pi over 3. So why isn't pi part of my answer? Well, it has to do with when you go and you, you do this, this plus or minus thing. This one is going to be um, um, I can't think of what I'm saying. When you square root, you can't square root a negative. So this one is going to have to be um, discarded. But if you check the graph, which I didn't put on here. Um, let me do something. I'm going to pull up this calculator here. No. Oh. I'm going to pull up this calculator here. And let's see. Let's go to y equals clear all that stuff out. And on this side I'm going to type in cosine x. And on this one, y2, I'm going to type in sine of x over 2. And let's see, I'm going to make sure that we're in radians. I want to go from 0 to 2 pi. 
and count by, let's do pile of cubes. So if I hit graph, there's the cosine, there's the sine, and you see right there is pi, and they don't cross at pi. They don't intersect there, so it's not a solution. That's not very good. Oh, so I went from negative to negative 10. Let me stretch that out a little bit. You can see it better. Just go from negative 2 to 2. So there's your cosine. There's your sine of, of x over 2. There you can see they intersect at pi over 3 and at 5 pi over 3, but at pi right here, they don't intersect. So that's another reason. I mean, you can check it graphically to see which ones have to be thrown out as well. Alright, so always check your solutions either graphically or keep in mind when there's square roots, you can't have negatives. Alright, All right. so if we solve this one now, um, I'm going to have, I'm going to rewrite this double angle as 2, and your double angles, remember you can choose whichever one you want. You'll get there. Um, it just kind of comes with age. I picked the 2 cosine squared at um, theta minus 1. So I'm going to write this as 2 cosine squared x minus 1 plus cosine x equals 0. And then I'm going to put this in order. So I'm going to have 2 cosine squared x plus cosine x minus 1 equals 0. Oh, yay, we get to factor again. We don't change it up much, though, do they? 2 cosine squared x plus 2 cosine x minus 1 cosine x minus 1 equals 0. 2 by 2. Factor out 2 cosine x leaves cosine x plus 1. Factor out a negative 1 leaves cosine x plus 1. Factor out a cosine x plus 1 leaves a 2 cosine x minus 1 equals 0. Set these to zero, and I have cosine x plus one equals zero, two cosine x minus one equals zero. So cosine x equals negative one, and cosine x equals one half. So I'm looking for all angles that have an x coordinate of negative one, which is pi, and of uh, one half, which is pi over three, and 5 pi over 3. Now how come this time I can keep the pi? Well, there's no square rooting where I get a negative, right? And there's nothing if I plug this in. If I take cosine of pi, I get an answer. Cosine of 2 pi, I get an answer. Same with over here. So I don't have to get rid of it this time. Alright, and if we check that graphically, those are my solutions. Pi over 3, pi and 5 pi over 3. There's your pi over 3, there's your pi, and there's your 5 pi over 3. Okay? Alright, so this one says solve algebraically for exact solutions in the interval 0 to 2 pi. Use your grapher only to support your algebraic work. What the heck is cosine 3x and what are we supposed to do with it? We've got double angles. I don't have any kind of triple angles. Well, the trick is, is to make one. I can rewrite 3x as 2x plus x. Agreed? Now, I can do sum of cosines. So, I would have this cosine x, but this cosine 2x plus x is going to give me cosine 2x, cosine x, switch the sign, sine 2x, sine x equals zero. Alright, so now if I uh, so now I, I, I don't want that double angle. Yeah, I don't want this double angle and I don't want this double angle, so I'm going to replace those. So I have cosine x plus my double angle, I'm going to, I used 1 minus 2 sine squared. So I replace just this 
with 1 minus 2 sine squared x times cosine x minus, and then if I replace sine of 2x, that's going to be 2 sine x cosine x times sine x equals 0. So all I did was replace my double angles. Okay, got rid of those. So now if I clean this up, I'm going to distribute the cosine here and the sine here. That's going to give me cosine x plus cosine x minus 2 sine squared x cosine x minus, I don't want to distribute this, but it's going to be a negative 2 sine squared x cosine x equals 0. Alright, so now if I clean this up, I'm going to have, have cosine x plus cosine x, which gives me 2 cosine x. And then I have negative 2 sine squared x cosine, negative 2 sine squared, I can combine those, is minus 4 sine squared x cosine x equals 0. Alright, and then if I... factor out a 2 cosine x. So if I factor out 2 cosine x, that means I'm dividing each of these by 2 cosine x. That's going to leave me 1 minus 2 sine squared x equals 0. Alright, so then I have set them to 0 and solve. I can say 2 cosine x equals 0, and 1 minus 2 sine squared x equals 0. This one, divide by 2, divide by 2, you get cosine x equals 0. And to solve this one, minus 1, minus 1, I get negative 2 sine squared x equals negative 1. Divide by negative 2, and I get sine squared x equals positive one half square root and I get sine x equals plus or minus the square root one is one square root of two. Rationalize I get sine x equals plus or minus the square root of two over two. So I'm looking for all angles that have an x coordinate of zero which would be pi over two and three pi over two. And to solve this, oops, to solve this one, I'm looking for y coordinates of plus or minus square root of 2 over 2, which gives me pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. So we have 6 solutions it looks like unless we have to throw any of them out which I shouldn't have to and nope if you look at the graph all right there is my pi over 4 there is my pi over 2 it's 2 pi over 4 but that reduces down to pi over 2 there is my 3 pi over 4 there is my 5 pi over 4. There is my 6 pi over 4, which is 3 pi over 2. And there is my 7 pi over 4. Okay? So, how do you use the trig identities to solve equations algebraically? You use the trig identities to simplify to sine and cosine or tan. But what I'm saying is you don't want any half angles, you don't want any squares, you don't want any of that, so you simplify those and then you solve. Alright, and we are at homework, so we are done. Happy homeworking, and I will see you next time.